Well, today is the day everyone will be heading out to the polls this morning. We're going to take a look at what you need to know for the elections and discussions on how West Texas will prepare in the event of the coronavirus. What some of those plans include next. If you are headed to the polls, there's quite a bit of rain out there and there will be even more as we go into the evening. I'll have all the details coming up on News West 9 Sunrise, the star of West Texas. I love this music so much. Oh, I know. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for waking up with us on Sunrise. It is Super Tuesday. It's March 3rd. Big day today. We're actually going to do uh, a little trivia. Y'all ready? No. Yeah, let's pull I'm it up. Let's pull up a trivia question. Time. Okay, here's the question. Why is Election Day? Why is it always on a Tuesday? Hmm? Do we act like we don't know? Or yeah, they, they know the answer. <laughs> they're, they're acting like they don't. What's the answer? Let's pop it up. So farmers, so back then in the 1800s, it took farmers about one to two days to get to a polling place. They couldn't do the weekend because they had to go to church and then Wednesday was market day. So just kind Ooh. of a fun fact. So it's just this tradition. The you know. yeah. Well, the voters have spoken. It was a really big night across West Texas as voters decided who they want to represent them in their counties and of course in Washington, D.C. Tatum Gwynn is breaking down all those races in Midland and Odessa. Good morning. It was a big night in Midland, Odessa. Here's a breakdown of all of those races. We'll start in Midland, where it was a monumental night. For the first time in three decades, we will have a new sheriff. Here's a look at those results. David Kreiner taking that election with 52% of the vote, followed by Rory McKinney, 34%, and Tom Hain, 13%. Let's move on to the next race in Midland. Those living in Precinct 1 voted on who they want to represent them as county commissioner. On the ticket was incumbent Scott Ramsey and Leonard Dumeyer. You see Scott Ramsey will keep his seat. He got 71% of the vote. Also in Midland County, other races that we were following. Uh, this is the county attorney race. Current county attorney Russell Mom will continue with that job. He got 58% of the vote. Also in Midland, here's a look at the district attorney's race. Laura Nodolf led with 79%. She um, handedly wins that race. More county commissioners races on the line, this time in Ector County. Mike Gardner, D.W. Hostugger, and Eddie Shelton have been campaigning for that precinct one seat. Here's a look at the results there. Mike Gardner with 47%. Moving on to precinct three, that one up for grabs. Don Stringer and Jeff Russell were vying for that one. Your results there, Don Stringer, 54% of the vote. A lot to go through this morning. Jolena? It's surely a lot to go through. Well, we start off this morning with these documents that we obtained from the day of the August 31st mass shooting. So they include things like police reports of the calls that came in. It's a whole lot to go through, so I'm just really going to sum up the details on what we know right now. Now, earlier that day, after the shooter got fired from his job, his boss called 911 to say that he had a man who was acting crazy and screaming. The shooter got in his car and drove through the fence of his business when his boss locked the electronic gate. Police then headed to his job. Dispatch got a call from the shooter who claimed that his boss tried to kidnap him and his co-workers were part of a child pornography conspiracy. The shooter then called the FBI and told them that the police officer who was responding to that call was part of a cult and that everyone in the cult would murder him and then get away with it. He then hung up and that was when everything started to unfold. Now one of the reports say a man filmed himself on a TikTok video, although we can't confirm that it was in fact the shooter himself, but someone reported it to a fusion center. If you don't know what that is, basically it's a center that receives threats from the FBI and then they notify law enforcement about that threat. The Fusion Center was in Utah. They called OPD and told them about that TikTok video. The video showed a man singing a song, and in that song, he was describing driving around and killing people with the caption, hashtag Odessa check. The video and that username listed in the report doesn't seem to be active on the app anymore. You know, I think it's important when we try to think about all of this, it, we, we really don't want to relive that day, but as that chaos was happening, our local law enforcement from DPS, OPD, MPD, they were all working really hard to respond to the several scenes. And of course, we know based on these reports that our officers were getting calls left and right. And if you remember that day, some people who were calling 911, they couldn't even get through di to dispatch because the lines were just so busy. But if it weren't for our officers, that hour, which felt like an eternity, could have gone on much longer. Had they not stopped the gunman 
from taking more lives from this community. But together, you know, it's always a reminder that we will still continue to heal from this horrible tragedy. And if you want to look at all those reports, we have them posted on our website. Just type in newswest9.com slash Permian Basin Strong. Well, the search continues this morning for a missing man out of Vector County. 78-year-old Edward Moss was seen last Saturday right outside his home in West Odessa. Lauren Ailes is at the scene where volunteers will continue their search later on today. So, Lauren, how long have they been searching for him? Joe, yesterday investigators spent the entire day searching through fields in West Odessa. Well, Odessa is sure covered in a blanket of snow. Actually, News West 9 Sammy Steele is out on Highway 191 near Fodry. So, Sammy, you've been out there all night. I know you're pretty cold. How's it looking like out there? Yeah, we sure have, Jolina. Good morning. It is icy, not nearly as cold as it was last night, but I got to tell you, it, you can tell that winds were whipping through here. We'll talk about bad traffic. I'm sorry, I had to. <laughs> Just be thankful you don't live in this California neighborhood, but a local homeowners association in San Jose brings in goats now and then to eat dead grass on the hillside. But today the goats managed to knock over an electric fence and also take a leisure stroll through the streets. Neighbors had to open up a side gate to lead the goats back where they were supposed to be. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but there was some minor damage in one yard. Well, this is the look I give Dylan every time I get hit in the face with the windshield, but this Brazilian baby was born giving her doctors a death stare. Apparently it fits her personality because her mom says she's already very expressive. She wrinkles her forehead when she's nursing or when she's getting her diaper changed. So Dylan, hopefully you can give us good weather because I'm just going to be giving you that stare. I gotta say, I think I beat you to it, but still very cold temperatures out there. That is the stare I am giving Mother Nature this morning. Disney is fast tracking the premiere of the filmed version of the original Broadway production, Hamilton. It'll now stream on Disney Plus on July 3rd. The film of the hit musical is being billed as a live capture that transports the audience into the world of the Broadway show in a uniquely intimate way. The Hamilton musical electrified audiences and even becoming one of the hottest tickets on Broadway. It won 11 Tony Awards, a Grammy, an Oliver Award, and a Pulitzer. Good morning, everyone. You'll want to get your cups ready for this special feel-good story. I brewed up a granddaughter who did something very special for her grandparents' 60th wedding anniversary. Abigail Liddick is a professional wedding photographer who surprised her grandparents, George and Ginger Brown, with a sweet wedding-style photo shoot to celebrate their anniversary. Abigail told them she wanted to dress them up and take them out to celebrate when they were visiting family in Allentown, New Jersey. Little did they know what she actually had in store for them. How's your day going? Oh, I love your new smile. That is the cutest. Can you show me again? <laughs> that is the cutest. Oh, how precious. <laughs> so the National Down Syndrome Adoption Network posted this video of this adorable baby girl you see right here. The video went viral and had millions of views. People from around the world fell in love with this little cuties. Wait for it, wait for it. Just wait, wait for it. Yay, there it is. They fell in love with her beautiful smile. I mean, come on, who wouldn't? Now, one thing that really touched my heart and brought tears to my eyes was when Glendon said, the focus should not be on him. It should be on the people in El Paso, including the people in Dayton, Ohio. He also offered this advice to others in a similar situation. Don't be scared to put others before yourself, which Glendon, I couldn't agree with you more. All right now, look at him go. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's Roland Holland mimicking the same cheerleading routine with his daughter in the stands. His daughter, Mackenzie, actually taught him the routine. She says seeing her father go viral has been fun for her and her cheerleading squad. Everyone is calling Roland cheer dad of the year and yes, you go Mr. Roland, right? <laughs> Yes. Right. Well, we had another great year with the toy drive, and it's all thanks to you guys. That's right. Now we've asked the Salvation Armies in Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring about how many families they've helped and about how many toys they've collected. So let's take a look at those total numbers. Let's have a drum roll, please. Would you look at that? About 1,135 families were helped, and about 10,260 toys were collect collected in total. Wow, another huge success this year. All because of you, these families will definitely have a Merry Christmas. And again, thanks to all of you who opened up your hearts and opened up your wallets to make it a very spe special Christmas for the kids. And from all of us here at News West 9, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Cheesiest pickup line would be, girl, are you a beaver? Cause damn. Why are you from Tennessee? Cause you're the only 10 I see, so like that. If I could write into the alphabet, I would put you and I together. <laughs> so I would come up to the person and say, B5. And they're like, what? Confused, right? Well, and then um, I would say, oh, sorry. I thought you were a vending machine because you're a snack. <laughs> Cheesy pickup lines work for a lot of people. They don't work for me, but you know, they I work for some it. people. You do? A couple of those. Really? All right, so you know I'm already really funny, so <laughs> let's be honest. Most oh, people just God. laugh at them. Do or at me, whichever one. Do you drop them, like, typically? Every, usually in a joking matter is the way I do okay. it. I don't usually do it in a serious situation. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? Love, love is in the air. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you guys enjoy a great weekend and enjoy the weather. Have a great day. If I was to ask her to come away would the yes reciprocate? Tube socks and roses, highways to denim, you were my lady.